Hello, everybody. My name is Arlita Washington. Some of you know me as Lisa Washington, and some of you know me as also as Beauty Boss Lisa. So today, um, you might know my name, but you might not know my story. So today, I want to share a little bit about my journey um, in this incredible company called Jaffra. Okay, so um, I was actually introduced to this company um, by being invited to a party given by my girlfriend. Um, she was, um, she invited me, I said I'd come, but I really wasn't gonna come. Um, and um, the consultant that actually taught the party um, ended up being my uh, sponsor and my upline, Lou Munholland, um, district director. She was a district director at the time, Lou was. But uh, my girlfriend invited me and I had just left my job at the VA and I didn't have any money to spend, so I wasn't going. And I'm not a people person anyway. I just don't like being around crowds of people. I know, right? Okay, so um, I, I wasn't gonna go and my girlfriend held up the party. She would not let Lou start the party without me. And so I was getting phone calls, phone calls saying, where are you? Get here. We're not starting without you. And um, I asked Lou later, why did you let her do that? And she said, well, if she was holding up the whole party for you and the rest of the ladies wanted you to be there, I wanted to meet you. And so um, <laughs> um, that party, I, I, I went to, to, I said I spend um, $5, I buy lipstick or lip or nail polish. And I ended up spending $100 and booking a party. And then I had a party every year for the first next four years. Now, let me tell you, I was not the ideal party participant. I was the heckler, the, la the, the joker that interrupted the party while Lou was doing it. And still, at the end of the party, she said, you should do this. You'll be great at it. And I thought, ha! And, um... We, many years later, I, I, I finally realized what she saw in me. But at that time, I could not. Even when I booked a party, I rescheduled multiple times. And I don't know why she let me keep rescheduling, but she did. And for the next four years, I would book a party, but I would always reschedule. <laughs> I would never do it on the right, on the day that I said. But later she told me she realized that I eventually would do it. I would be a person of my word. And so, um, that is how I came to be introduced to Jaffra. Um, at that time, um, I joined the company four years later at a party that Lou, the fourth party that Lou had had at my house, and um, went on to do some really big things fast. However, um, I became pregnant right after, and um, by the time I had the my, my baby. Um, well, right after I had my baby, um, my fifth son, Nicholas, um, three weeks after he was born, um, he was, we rushed him to the hospital and he was diagnosed with um, bacteria meningitis with overwhelming septic shock, which means the meningitis had poisoned every item, in, every organ in his body. Um, at the time, I had, um, I was doing Jaffa parties. I had Jaffa credit and I owed Jaffa money. I owed Jaffa money. I think like three or $400, $300, I believe. When he had, um, was in the hospital, Nicholas had at three weeks old, a stroke, a major stroke. And at four weeks old, he had another stroke, which wasn't as major as the first one. And so from there, the doctor said he will, at one point, they, they advised us to take him off life support, no brain activity. And they said that um, if he survived, if he got better, if he survived, he would never feed himself, never bathe himself, never walk, never dress himself in the quality of life. And these are the doctor's words. The quality of life would not be something that I would want to subject my child to. Needless to say, my husband and I rejected that. We do not believe that we respect the doctors and we want them to do their best, but we do not believe that they are the final authority. And so we just had faith and we rejected that. Um, I will say that um, 
Nicholas um, went on to be okay. But when while I was dealing with his months and months and months of it being in um, ICU and then um, guarded condition and then finally stable condition and then finally get, coming out of the hospital, my Jaffa account went to collection. All right, so that that he was born in April. My account went to collection sometime in there. By the time December rolled around, Lou, who had been checking on me all the time, she never stopped checking on me. She called me in December and she says, so are you ready to get started again? And I said, yes, because I knew I was never gonna put him in daycare. It wasn't gonna happen. So um, she says, okay, I want you to go to um, JTI with me, which is kind of like conference. And I, I told her, I said, I cannot afford day TI. I'm ready to get started. I will figure out a way to do it, but I have to pay off my old account first and um, I have to find the money to get started again. So Lou said to me, let's get you to JTI. I will pay. That's what she said. I will pay. I said, but I'm not a consultant. And she said, well, this year they're allowing us to have guests. So you can go with my guest. And the guest amount was lower than the consultant amount, but she registered me as her guest and we went the first week in February. When we got there and we had our name tags, my name tag said guest, but there were hundreds of people in the room who knew that I was a consultant. They did not know I was no longer a consultant or that my account went to collection. So um, Lou took a star sticker and put it over the word guest on my name tag. And throughout that weekend, whenever someone would say to me, why is there a star on your name tag? And I would say, because I'm a star, of course. And so that's how we got through that weekend. So we came home and um, I was ready to, um, to, to hit the road. I already knew Lou and I had discussed what my plan was, which was to take a brochure, sell enough Jaffa to pay off my old account, and then sell enough to get started again. So for the whole month of February, I worked. I collected $1,000 worth of orders so that I could take the $500 to pay off my old account, which at the time you had to pay time and a half. So if I owed Jeff for 300, I had to pay them 300 plus 150 plus some late fees. So it ended up being about $500. So I worked the entire rest of the month of February. I sold um, products from the catalog and I, Whenever I would um, make um, sell something, I would give it to Lou. She would order under her account and pay Jaffa with half and put the other half toward my 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 collect my collection account. And so by the end of February, yes, I had gotten my old account paid off. Now to get started again, I worked the entire month of March doing the same thing. I had to sell a thousand dollars worth of Jaffa the month of March in order to get a kit and get all my party supplies because I, I then I had to get uh, makeup testers and mirrors and washcloths and um, almond products and not all of that didn't come in the kit. And so again, I worked all the month of March um, selling from the brochure in order to be able to start my business again. So if you look at my start date, it says March 29th, <laughs> 1995. And it was the 29th because I was desperately determined not to get down to the 31st. I don't like working on think, um, coming down to the last day of the month. I hate it because anything could happen and then I would lose. And so I got that up paid off. And on March the 29th, 1995, I resigned and I got my, my current um, case number, consultant case number. <laughs> Okay, so there we were. I was off to the races again. Um, I will say that I was really motivated because um, the money that I planned to make from Jaffra this time was going to go toward giving my son and my family a better um, lifestyle but particularly my son, Nicholas, because he had severe medical issues. He had a speech therapy, speech therapist, occupational therapist, um, two neurologists, um, a pediatrician, a hematologist, and the list just went on and on. And so um, what I was able to do with my Jaffa income was I was able to go out of um, network with his medical care. 
So if I didn't like the doctors that the network would pay for, I could go out of network and I could supplement what they would pay with, with my Jaffer income. So for years, he had above average speech therapists, above average physical therapists, above average um, neurologists, one who um, w was not taking any, any patients. And somehow I talked this man into taking my son. And so, um, <laughs> and so therein um, began my early Jaffer career. Um, I had some really good successes over the years, but one particular person besides Lou came into the, uh, my life and made a real, really big difference in my life. And that person was Vicki Hackey. So early on the year that I got started again, actually, <laughs> um, it was either that year or, or somewhere in that first year, um, Vicki came to Georgia to do an event, a training event at the um, University of Georgia in Athens, where the Bulldogs play. And so Lou called me one, one Friday and she's like, what are you doing tomorrow? Um, tomorrow, I said, laundry. And she, she said, well, can you do a laundry the different day? And I said, I could, why? And she said, well, I'm going to Athens to see a Jaffa district, a, a fellow district director do a training. And I would like for you to just ride with me, keep me company. And so I said, okay, laundry can wait. And I went with Lou to Athens and I met Vicki Hacking. And um, it was an all day training and we had a break for lunch and everybody could go out and eat lunch. Well, um, <laughs> um, while the rest of the people left to eat lunch, Vicki had brought her lunch and she stayed in the room. Well, I stayed in the room with Vicki and talked. And I picked her brain and I asked questions and I was hungry. And she showed me her paycheck. Well, she told me about her paycheck and I was hooked. I was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to be where she is. And another thing that she showed me was she had a Palm Pilot. And, and she showed me this Palm Pilot and she encouraged me. She says, anytime some new gadgets come out, buy it and see if you can um, can make it fit into your business. Use it for your business to grow your business. Because you're either going to give that money to Uncle Sam or you can put it into your business. Well, that became my new goal, gadgets. And I never got the palm because it was too expensive for me at the time with all the medical bills that my, my, my husband and I had. But um, a, a little while later, um, the, um, the visor came out and it was a little cheaper than the palm. And I hopped on that. And so over the years, Vicki and I have had many personal phone calls. She would call me, I would call her and, um, we would just talk about business and technology and how technology could help business. Um, we were two of the people who had a website before Jaffra got on the World Wide Web. And uh, we both got that letter from Jaffa Council saying, take your website down because that's Jaffa's logo and um, trademark. And we're coming onto the web now, so you can't use it. So we've had some adventures over the years. But therein, because of that, every time something new gadget came out, if I thought I could use it to build my business, I did. And that eventually, many, many, many years later, led me to Facebook. And so when Facebook came out, I thought, well, you know, this is another extension of the gadget. I'm going to see if I can use this to build my business. And that's one of the thing, reasons. So I guess inadvertently, I can thank Vicki for the fact that I'm here now like a digital beauty boss. <laughs> Because I've always looked at, uh, and before Facebook, I was on Twitter and using, um, um, it, Twitter had a live network. I can't even think of what it's called now. Um, but I was on Twitter doing the, the, the lives. I, I just found out recently they still have that going on there. Um, but then when Facebook came out and it was just a baby, I thought, well, I'm going to hop over there and see what they have going on over there. And so I've been on all of it, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, uh, almost all, well, not recently, there've been so many coming out, I can't get on them all. But that's how I ended up here, being a student of building on social media, being um, and passing on those skills that I have learned to my team members. And so um, I encourage you, don't be afraid of technology. Um, that's what Vicki encouraged me to do. Um, don't, and by the way, we went from the visor to the Blackberry. 
And I clearly remember both of us having a BlackBerry and we were just so excited about it. And we was like, oh, we'll never leave BlackBerry. When iPhone came out, we were like, oh, we'll never leave BlackBerry. And then I remember when we jumped to an iPhone. <laughs> okay, so um, there is one other honorable mention I would like to make before I close my story. Um, Gabby Gutierrez. Um, I remember meeting Gabby early on when she was first going from manager to district director. And I feel like we kind of connected. I know that she was one of the people who would answer my questions when I asked. And she would also ask me questions and she would respect the, the answers that I gave. She didn't try to tweak it or discount it. She didn't try to turn it around and say, yeah, but which is what a lot of people would do. They're like, how did you get that result? And I'm telling them like, yeah, but she never did that. She just took everything at face value. And so over the years, um, when Vicki has had conference call, I have been a guest speaker on her conference call many times. And I have also facilitated in her stead many times. And Susan Williams. And um, with Gabby Gutierrez, she has been a guest on my, um, on my team conference call several times. And so she was one of the few. I, had, I And I confess, I asked a lot of district directors, would you, you know, be willing to get on my, my conference call with my team and just for five or 10 minutes share? And I got turned down many times. But the people who did not turn me down was, uh, was Vicki Hacking and Gabby Gutierrez. And so to you two, I love you. All right, so there's my little Jaffa story. I hope this helps you get to know me a little bit more, and I can't wait to get to know all of you a little bit more too, okay?